It is difficult to determine where to begin exploring a city packed with ancient relics and symbols of the Christian faith. The things that are important to you will have the most significant influence on your decisions. Still, some landmarks and attractions in Italy are considered among the best in the world. Even the most dedicated tourists should take some time to relax and take in the Dolce Vita at one of Rome's many parks or sidewalk cafes because the city is so massive that it has the potential to be overwhelming. You will be able to learn the top 10 locations in Rome that you absolutely cannot miss by watching this video. Number 10. Piazza del Popolo and Santa Maria del Popolo Piazza del Popolo was created in the early 19th century as the northern gateway to the city center. It is located symmetrically at the apex of a triangle formed by three streets, one of which is Via Corso, Rome's primary retail route. At the very heart of the structure is an Egyptian obelisk that has been given the name Flaminio. It is perched on top of a fountain in which four lions made of white marble spray water into four round pools made of travertine. The twin churches Santa Maria dei Miracoli and Santa Maria in Monte Santo are on either side of Via Corso and face one another like mirror images. On the other side of the vast piazza is the Augustinian Church of Santa Maria del Popolo, which is located in the opposite direction. There are two stunning chapels within, as well as paintings painted by Pintoriccio and tombs designed by Andrea Sansovino in the choir area of the building. In 1515, Raphael was commissioned to create the Chigi Chapel, and the Cesari Chapel is home to two significant paintings by Caravaggio. Climb the steps next to the Basilica to reach the Pincio Terrace, which offers views down onto the piazza and across the entirety of Rome. Number 9. Piazza Navona One of Rome's most famous Baroque squares, Piazza Navona still shows Emperor Domitian's stadium. Celebrations and horse races continued in the Middle Ages. Borromini rebuilt it in Baroque style with the west side's beautiful row of palaces and Sant'Agnese Cathedral. Its campanile, dome, and facade show how Baroque architecture integrates roofs, windows, columns, and piers. Agnes and a Roman mosaic floor. Sant'Agnese inspired Baroque and Rococo churches worldwide. Borromini designed the piazza and its facades, while Bernini designed its spectacular Baroque fountain, Fontana dei Fiumi. The vibrant fountain represents the Nile, Ganges, Danube, and Rio de la Plata, the four most significant rivers on each continent at the time. Rivers have indigenous vegetation and fauna. The other two fountains in the piazza are the 16th century Fontana del Moro, erected by Giacomo della Porta in front of the Palace Pamphili, and the 19th century Fontana del Nettuno with a statue of Neptune. Today it's full of Romans, tourists, street entertainers, gift stores, cafes, and one of Rome's best Christmas markets in December. The San Luigi degli Francesi church between the piazza and the Pantheon houses three late 16th century Caravaggio paintings. Number 8. Santa Maria Maggiore Santa Maria Maggiore, one of Rome's most spectacular cathedrals, was built when Pope Liberius saw a vision of the Lady and told him to build a church where snow would fall the next day. The Grand Basilica was built on the Esquiline Slope the next morning after snow fell in August. Since the 5th century, Mass has been held here daily. The 13th century apse is decorated with Old and New Testament mosaics by Rome's famous mosaicists, and the three aisles of its 86-meter interior are separated by 40 marble and 4 granite columns. The upper walls are decorated with Rome's 4th century mosaics, and the floor is inlaid with colorful stone by Lake Como's 12th century artisans. The coffered ceiling displays the first American gold to enter Italy. Italy. One of Rome's four papal basilicas, it's a pilgrimage site with two popes' tombs. Did you enjoy knowing about these places so far? Stay till the end of this video to learn more areas. If you liked the video, remember to hit the like button and remember to subscribe to our channel for such content. Number 7. Centro Storico and Spanish Steps 
You can hardly read the street names in one part of Rome on a tourist map because there are so many things to do there. You could spend your whole holiday exploring the Centro Storico, the old center of Rome, home to many beautiful churches, magnificent palaces, and bustling squares. Instead of rushing from one of the area's must-see attractions to the next, take your time taking in the ambience. Stop at lesser-known churches like Santa Maria del Popolo to see paintings by Bernini and Caravaggio, in addition to the Piazza Navona, the Trevi Fountain, and the Basilica of Santa Mary Maggiore. Take a moment to pause at the Spanish Steps, a flight of uneven stairs and landings that leads to the Trinità de Monti, a French church. The Piazza de Spagna, the square at their base and one of Rome's most famous squares where the stairs get their name, tourists have traditionally made the stairs their favorite hangout. Number 6. Vittorio Emmanuel II Monument Ironically, Romans rarely enjoy this enormous tower, one of Italy's national emblems, calling it a wedding cake or giant typewriter. Like it or not, the massive neoclassical building atop Capitoline Hill, ancient Rome's symbolic hub, overlooks Piazza Venezia. It honors the first king of unified Italy, Vittorio Emmanuel II, with an equestrian statue. Italy's unknown soldier's grave and unification museum are here. The upper terrace offers 360-degree views of Rome by lift. Number 5. Trevi Fountain this 17th century masterpiece is one of the city's most visited sites. Dropping one penny into the Trevi Fountain, Fontana di Trevi, is thought to guarantee your return to Rome. Agrippa, the 1st century BC art patron, built the Fontana di Trevi aqueduct to supply water to his baths. Niccolò Salvi erected the fountain for Pope Clement XII between 1732 and 1751 against the Dukes of Poli's palace's rear wall. Number 4. Roman Forum the Forum, situated in the center of a bustling city, feels like ancient Rome, although what remains of this center of Roman life and government shows only a tiny fraction of its original splendor. The standing and fallen columns, triumphal arches, and walls still impress, especially when you consider that for centuries the Forum was the history of the Roman Empire and the Western world. Number 3. The Pantheon the Pantheon, the best preserved Roman structure, has survived 2,000 years. Pope Gregory III removed the gilded bronze ceiling tiles, and Pope Urban VIII ordered its bronze roof scraped and melted down to cast the canopy above St. Peter's Altar and Castel Sant'Angelo Canons. The Pantheon's brickwork, restored following a fire in AD 80, demonstrates Roman builders' technical skill. Its 9 meter central entrance illuminates its 43 meter dome, the crowning achievement of Roman interior architecture. Number 2. Vatican City The Vatican is the world's smallest independent state surrounded by Vatican walls. The Vatican Palace and Gardens, St. Peter's Basilica, and St. Peter's Square are under the Pope's control. Museums and the Basilica fill this small space. Number 1. The Colosseum and the Arch of Constantine Rome's Flavian Amphitheater resembles Paris's Eiffel Tower. The Colosseum, Roman antiquity's most prominent tower, still inspires sports arenas like football stadiums. The Senate erected the Arch of Constantine to honor the Emperor as liberator of the city and bringer of peace after his victory at the Milvian Bridge in 312. The Skip the Line Ancient Rome and Colosseum Half-Day Walking Tour with an experienced guide saves time in extensive lines. We have come to the end of this video. We hope you see these places when you visit Rome for your next trip. Do subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for our next video.